overlooked but indispensable cornerstone of every NFL team. Saddled with the responsibility of controlling the line of scrimmage, these colossal men must possess a variety of skills. Strength, balance, nice feet, quickness, leverage, big heart. Craze the man to uh, be able to go through brick walls. Smooth, you know, charming. It takes a lot of skill to be 340 pounds and be able to do the things we do. Quarterbacks always think they're the smartest guys, but the linemen, with what they have to do, matching the mental and physical, I think they're unique in all the sports. So we're what you might call big renaissance men. Today, eight of the league's top big men will try and capture the title of top lineman from defending champion Warren Sapp. There's no way I'm going down in Miami. It is on from South Florida. Just a Jason Elam 63-yard field goal away or a Morton Anderson NFC title game-winning field goal away from Pro Player Stadium, site of Super Bowl 33. We are inside the NFL Experience, site of the NFL Lineman Challenge. It is the battle of the big man. I'm Stuart Scott. When I say big, I'm talking massive. Eight linemen in this competition whose total weight, about 1.2 tons. But these aren't big, slow, lumbering linemen who run a 40-yard dash in about four minutes. They are serious athletes. They're fast enough to run with tight ends on the football field, nimble enough to track down running backs, and strong enough to handle each other, many of whom weigh over 300 pounds. And they're going to put all their skills to use on this field in this competition, including handling the football. And actually, three of the eight guys have actually scored touchdowns in their career, so some of them know something about that. One of the guys who scored a touchdown before has dominated this event for the last two years. He is standing by now with my partner, Mike Golick. Thanks, Stu. The big question, can two-time defending champ Warren Sapp from the Tampa Bay Bucks make it the three-peat? Well, why not go to the source himself? Warren, how important is it to defend that title a third time? Very important, because if I go home without the title, they're going to rag me a long time, but some pretty stiff competition. And you're at the top of the mountain, and these guys have seen you there for a couple of years now. They're gunning for you. Well, it's lonely at the top, and I kind of like it that way, so we're going to see if I can stay. Now, informally, you've had a chance to check out the other competitors today. Where, where do you think the competition is going to come from? <laughs> Robert Forche and Daryl Russell. Now, these are two smaller guys. What about the bigger guys in the competition? You don't give them a shot at, at you? Nah, because this is pretty much a speed and quickness kind of thing, and Robert and Daryl and myself are part of it quick as that are over there, so we're going to see who's going to stand on top. All right, Warren, good luck. For more on the eight competitive points, double the points in the last event, the obstacle course. Let's go to Mike Gullick to explain our first event. All right, the first event is the shuttle run. Now it's going to combine speed, quickness, and agility, and all eight contestants are going at the same time for a little more competition. We start out behind the line here, straight ahead sprint, fast as you can to the line. Now the key here, both feet have to cross the line, exchange into a backward run. The guys that know what they're doing, you'll see a little lean. The guys that don't, they'll be all straight like this. But again, when you get to the end, both feet have to cross. Now we go to a shuffle. Shuffle, no crossover. Shuffle as fast as you can to the line. Both feet crossing. Again, finish with a dead sprint. Now mind you, they'll be going a lot faster than me. Plain and simple, first one across gets all the points. Nimble and Mike Golick don't really go together, I don't think. Here are your lane assignments for the first event. Jonathan Ogden, the offensive lineman. Big Daryl Russell has tree trunk legs. Derek Deese, yeah, D, it is on you. Michael Strahan, guy had 15 sacks this year. Looking serious, too. And there is your defending champion, Warren Sapp. Warren's like, man, I got this. Robert Forche still has not smiled once. I don't know if he will, the whole of <laughs> Trace Armstrong, your hometown hero. And Nate Newton has been to more Pro Bowls than anybody in this event. He's got six under his belt. Stu, this is the first time that all eight competitors will be going against each other at once. That really does add to the competition. Before the race, the discussion was whether to wear cleats and tape or just tennis shoes. They went about half and half. Look at Daryl Russell gets a huge jump to start. And Nate Newton having a little trouble now. Trace Armstrong almost falls backwards. Halfway done, Warren Sapp. He said he was going to be quick, and he is quick. Sapp, straight hand, Russell at the end. Looks like a photo finish between all three. Let's take a look at that ending again. Sapp and Strahan are neck and neck coming to the end here. Looks like Warren gets his upper body over front. Boy, that is almost too close to call, Stu. Yeah, but the rule is it's not body, it's foot first. And take a look. Michael Strahan's foot crosses before Warren Sapp. Strahan's the winner of your first event. He is standing by now with my partner, Mike. 
Well, Michael, you must have known the rule. Feet across first, beats body across first. That's how you won your feet came across first before Warren Sass body. You got the early jump on the two-time defending champ. Oh, the main thing is he has bigger feet than I do. But uh, Warren, Warren was coming. He was he started out last. Thought I had him early, but he picked it up at the end. How big of a, a motivation is it to try and knock this guy off the top? Oh, when they announced the two-time champion, uh, I, I wanted him then. Last week I saw him and he told me, oh, Michael, don't work out. Don't worry about it. Just come out and have a good time. Everybody's just trying to do that. I think he was trying to bait me. Warren, you trying to bait these guys? Nah, I guess I'm getting a little company at the top of the mountain. <laughs> Not somebody that's serious about it. So let's see. So after one event, Michael Strahan is your leader with 16 points. Warren Sapp, I think he was pretty surprised. He felt he would take that first event, but he's sitting in second at 14. The NFL Lineman Challenge is brought to you by Campbell's Chunky, soup that eats like a meal. And by Doubletree Hotels, guest suites and resorts, the official hotel of the NFL. for the NFL Lineman Challenge. One event down. Our next event, described in detail by Mike Gullick. Our next event is the power drive, and it's that simple. We'll see how powerfully our guys can drive things. First, the super drag. It's 125 pounds they have to drag, and since I'm retired, I ain't doing it. But they got to bring it all the way up to this line. As soon as their feet pass it, they're done. Get rid of the harness. They come to the five-man sled. Here the key is raise the flag. Right there, that's got to go up. They go along the five. As they get lower, they get much more difficult. That's why I'm not doing it. Finish all those. They come to the one-man dummy. Now they got to drive this about eight yards. Get low, drive. Why am I doing it? I don't know. I'm going to stop. They bring everything, including their feet, past the line, and they finish up with a big boy. They got to slam into this, raise the orange flag, and head for the oxygen tank, because I guarantee you they'll be tired after this one. And the way the events go, whoever's in last place, they are the first person to the next event, which means Nate Newton, longtime cowboy. He gives a yell, drops the harness. Let's go, Nate. You're an offensive lineman. Get it up. Well, he's got that knee sleeve on the left knee, and he's really limping on it. That is a hard sled to, to lift right there, but he gets it. Taking his time, though, not really moving very fast. You can see he's noticeably limping. <laughs> <laughs> I guess they said, well, you know what, forget that one. And that's going to cost him a second. That is a penalty. <laughs> and Nate trudges in with a time of 28.2 seconds. Well, that's before the penalty. <laughs> They're going to add some on to that one. And you could tell even he was disappointed in that. Now Jonathan Ogden, another offensive lineman. You figure offensive linemen would do better with the first set of dummies, right? Well, they would because they're used to this drive blocking. But again, he's 6'8", and, and as these dummies go down, well, he's not even going to go to the low dummies. He just surpassed them, and he'll take the penalties for it. So it's a second for each dummy you don't do. He figured it would have taken more than three seconds to do those three dummies. <laughs> he doesn't do the one-man sled either. He's going to pick up a bunch of penalty time here. How often do you see somebody laughing as they finish? You're supposed to be putting in a little bit more effort than that, huh? <laughs> All right, your third... And we got three straight offensive linemen. Derek Deese, he's all focus. He's the lightest offensive lineman of the group here. Deese has legs like, like a wide receiver. Well, I've played against him, and he's got great technique and great feet. And you're seeing right here, gets all of them up as he oh, goes to the one-man drive. A oh, serious drive. He almost oh, turns oh, up and it over. over. Derek Deese. Samuel L. Jackson. To the NFL experience in the NFL Lineman Challenge celebrating Super Bowl 33. And this just in, the Minnesota Vikings have signed somebody to replace Randy Moss. We're kidding, <laughs> but if you want another surprise, how about that, huh? Back to the power drive competition in the Miami Dolphins, Trace Armstrong, a D lineman. And Warren Sapp even said Trace is one of the strongest guys out here. So you figure Trace is going to do pretty well in the dummies, right? And again, one of those uh, skips the middle one, which is the toughest one and gets four out of the five. That's going to cost him a second. He really attacks the blocking slip, but again, he didn't get it past the line. You see, he finishes better than the time to beat, but he does have penalty seconds to add on. Let's take another look at his uh, dummy attempt with the five dummies. Well, he gets the first one. It's the highest. Here you see him having problems. He isn't low enough, and he's trying to push it up. It takes him too long. So he just skips the middle dummy, which is the lowest and has the most tension. He gets the fourth, gets the fifth, 
and he's standing by with Mike. All right, a couple of penalties out there. That low dummy seems to be getting a lot of people that are not driving the sled all the way. You know, with these old knees, it's hard to get down that low. You know, every time they mention your name here, you get a huge ovation. Uh, is the hometown crowd giving you a little edge? Well, not yet, but I hope it will later. <laughs> all right, good luck, man. Thanks, guys. Our next competitor, Big Daryl Russell of the Raiders. The key is to look at the glass half full. We're going to be optimistic. We're going to think positive. Know that we can live to see another day. We're going to be all right. The key is leverage. Leverage. Right? Hold on. Something tells me even if the camera wasn't on him, he'd still be talking to himself. Like, Man, when we saw him warm up, he's got a very big lower body. He's absolutely right. Leverage is the key, and he's doing a nice job getting low on the five-man sled, which is really an offensive lineman drill. Look at those legs. And he's one of those guys with one shoulder almost who pushed that past the line. Well, you see down on the left, this is the time he's got to beat. Nope, doesn't do it. 20.4 seconds which puts him right now in second place. Our next competitor, Warren Sapp. Born and raised right here in the state of Florida, he went to a Popka High School up near Orlando where he was a high school All-American tight end. It is hard to find a player that has more fun on the football field than Tampa Bay Buccaneers defensive star Warren Sapp. That's why you get up early in the morning right here. Go ball, have a lot of fun. Rocky's back, baby. That's a kid's game, I mean, that's the mentality that you gotta have because if my career ended tomorrow, I can say I had a hell of a time out there on the field. And that's the one thing I, I won't be known for, I gotta have fun. Sometimes I dream that he is me. Oh, stand up, the gut! So I could retire from this game I play. <laughs> But don't let the big grin fool you. Sapp, one of the fiercest competitors in the league, and with the second straight Pro Bowl selection, has established himself as one of the best in the business. Now, I just want to put it in your mind that you can't beat me. And once that seeps into your mind that, you know, I can't block this guy, then the game's mine to be had. With this tremendous work ethic and blazing speed for such a big man, Sapp absolutely makes life miserable for quarterbacks and loves every second of it. I get to go out and hunt pretty boys all day. Nobody's gonna say a thing, but great job, so <laughs> why not? You know, Warren likes to have a good time, but you know, you know he wants his third straight title. As soon as that whistle blows, he is all business. Just like he is on the field. Look at that guy, he's just ridiculously strong. He's throwing those things up. But he plays the game on leverage, and that's why he is so successful. Well, there he goes a little high into the one-man side. He doesn't finish, and that's going to cost him a second. His time to beat, 20.1 seconds. His time without the penalty, 19 seconds. See, again here, a lot of the guys having problems getting low enough on this one-man sled. They're not pushing it straight, so he just gives it up and takes the one-second penalty. But even with that one-second penalty, Warren Sapp moves into first place in this competition. First place entering this competition, the man who won the first one, Michael Strahan of the Giants. Another great athlete who's really coming to his own the last couple of years with a couple of 15-sack seasons. Long arms, so that, that middle one will be tough, but he gets it up. Guys with long arms, no matter how strong they are, they still have trouble sometimes with that with the leverage, upper body leverage. Now, he actually hit the dummy right, and he got it all the way across. He went in nice and low. And he also has a nice finish, does the flip, but it's time 20.2 in third place behind Derek Deese and Warren Sapp. And this is where it may have cost him again with those long arms. It takes him a little while to get that toughest dummy up. You saw how he struggled? Watch Warren Sapp down low, leverage up, easy going. Warren Sapp, your winner. He's standing by now with Mike. Warren, a lot of the competitors had problems with the five-man uh, dummies and then the one-man sled. Do you think you being here before gave you a bit of an advantage there? I think so, because I knew the middle one, you had to get a little low and just lift up on them and get them up. But it's known as half the battle. <laughs> well, now you are all alone in first place. Uh, plan on giving up that lead anymore? No, I'm out of here. We's out. <laughs> I-95, the perfect skate ride. I'm gone. <laughs> all right, man. Good luck. Thanks. So here are your standings in the second event, the power drive, Warren Sapp. Finishes with 16 points. Derek Deese, 14. Here are your overall standing. Sap with his first place finish in the power drop. Welcome back to the NFL experience and the NFL lineman challenge. Son, buckle up that chin strap. We're about to play ball. Granddad, granddad, I want to be in the NFL lineman challenge. I promise I'll watch the ball. 
Whether it's a guard for getting the snap count or an over-anxious nose tackle, jumping off sides is a cardinal sin for linemen. How bad is that? Oh, man, that's real bad. You really want to just run to the locker room. First thing in your head is, oh, <laughs> The only time you get notice is when you mess up. Ball start, number 75, and you're like, I didn't do it. Boom, 50 and 10, hunt. Half the time, the quarterback is moving. Set hunt, 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 hunt. And They don't just use their voices. They bob the head and they shoot the hands. Hunt, 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 hunt. But what are you supposed to do? Hunt, hunt, hunt. When you can get a defensive guy to jump, and he first thing you do, oh, uh, John Randall, Minnesota, believe me, it's always the other guy. Oh, he's, he's got the best corner in the world. Hey, 75 is offside. He's lined up far, well up on the ball. And while it happens in every game, most linemen have a hard time admitting their guilt. I wouldn't know. I never jumped offside. <laughs> Not Nate. Go to the next question. I jumped twice in four years, so you got the wrong fella. <laughs> it's always the offensive lineman's fault. Nate Newton would disagree. Mike, explain the next event. Our next event is the strongest man. We'll find out who the biggest brute is of our eight contestants. We're going to use the incline press because it really shows the movement the linemen use on the field. Now, back in my Philly days, I used to do about 350 plus in this weight, but I'm going to go a little less to show you the proper technique of what our guys have to do. They'll take it up here. Now, they've got to come down and touch their chest right here, and they've got to be able to lock out ah, at the top. Most weight wins. Thanks, ladies. Sure, Mike. Thank you. Anything for you. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, Mike, you got a really, really tough job there. You know that, don't you? I needed a spot. <laughs> These guys might need a spot. The bar starts at 275, and Nate Newton puts it up. Warren Sapp won this competition last year. That's a child play for him. Can we all just agree and just go to 325? I mean, that no sense in us wasting that 300, I mean. <laughs> not yet, Warren, not yet. Trace Armstrong with 300 pounds in the bar. Struggle, but he put it up. Think positive. Now, there's a new technique. Talk while you lift. <laughs> All right, Darrell, it's your world, kid. Michael Strahan, 325. He has those long arms you talked about. Didn't seem to bother him. Not a bit. And this man, Robert Porsche, still not smiling, Stu. And maybe he's a little bit intimidated. Nate Newton. 350 pounds, Boy, struggling. stuck on him, but he got it. Great determination, got that going. And that's my last loss to the beast, that is it. That is it. <laughs> Nate wasn't doing it anymore, no matter how much the bar went up. Jonathan Ogden, 350, cannot get it. No, at six foot eight, those arms are way too long. Trace Armstrong, also at 350, he fails. Robert Porsche, 375 pounds. This is probably the biggest surprise of the competition, Porsche. Put it up. A Derek Dees had to match that at 375. And he can't do it. He is out. Darrell Russell gets a shot at 375. Talking to himself again. He's saying he's got it and the bar's going back down in his chest. And maybe if he conserved his energy and didn't talk, he could have gotten 375 pounds. Put up a fight, but not good enough. Not good enough. All right, we join Michael Strahan now with 380 pounds on the bar. Porsche got 375, but Strahan's jumping to the 380 to try and take the lead here. I think he surprised some people by how easily he's put up the weight. He's got very long arms. This is not an event conducive to long arm people, but he's done it pretty easily throughout. And he's doing it pretty easily again. He gets 380 very easily, Stewart. And that was the weight that Warren Sapp won with last year, 380. Strahan, no problem. He's catching the eye of Warren Sapp, I guarantee you. Come on, Sappy! I'm standing still, baby. I'm with you. Come on with me, Sappy! Oh, now the trash talk starts. You got 380, you're feeling pretty good about yourself. And this is exactly the weight, as you said, that Warren Sapp lifted last year to win. So this is this is his max. Two, three. Oh, 
Oh, and he has trouble right off the bat. Sap does not get 380. You said he had it last year. Once you bounce that thing off your chest, if you don't put it right up, you're gone. And Sap knows he's relinquished possibly the overall lead to that man, Michael Strahan, but we're not done here just yet. Robert Porsche is still a chance to win this one. 390. Porsche could do 380. He instead chooses to do 390. Maybe he figures he just has one more lift in him. 390. Woo! Michael Strahan did it. 380. Talk about putting pressure on yourself. Yeah, give it to me, though. Michael Strahan wondering if he'll have to do another lift. Give me a good lift. And I'm sure hoping that he won't. Two, three. Now, Porsche struggled at 375. This is a big jump. He got it about two inches up his chest and cannot get it the rest of the way. Porsche does not make 390, so your winner, Michael Strahan, with a lift of 380 pounds. Let's join Mike and Mike. All right, Michael, you won the event, but then you looked like you wanted to go up a little higher. How high do you think you could have got? Oh, I don't know. I wanted the record until I heard Willie Rofe got 415. I decided to cut his short and, <laughs> and save my energy for the rest of the event. Well, you are now in the lead by yourself over the two-time defending champion, Warren Sapp. How's that feeling? Oh, it feels good. Mine introduces new version 4.0. There has never... Welcome back to the NFL Experience, site of the NFL Lineman Challenge. It's all part of Super Bowl 33. The list of great carries by NFL linemen is so short that it's an infamous one that remains at the top. It's picked up by Jim Marshall, who's running the wrong way. Marshall is running the wrong way. There's a lot of pressure. You know, we're not used to handling football. So I go entire days and weeks in practice without ever touching the football. But as these warriors of the pit have raised their level of athleticism to new heights, the desire for the glory as a ball carrier or goal line receiver has grown as well. I mean, you know, give me the ball in my hands. I can make plays, man. Make plays. All linemen think this, but I mean, I know it. <laughs> and while tackle Jonathan Ogden might be emerging as an offensive weapon for the Ravens, defensive linemen are also focused on what to do after the ball is safely tucked away. God help you if you get run down by an offensive lineman. You'll never hear the end of that. My biggest focus was just don't get caught before you get to the end zone. But if you never let a lineman run you down from behind, I think I'd rather get tackled by a quarterback. All right, those were linemen handling the ball in theory. How do they really do it, Mike? All right, our next event is the fumble recovery, and we're going to make the big guys do something they're not used to doing, bending down and actually picking up a ball with their big mitt. This takes some real athleticism, so keep your eyes peeled on this one. Start off three-point stance through the gauntlet, then through the wall of dummies to cause their first fumble. They got to bend down, pick it up. Now they got to run to the end zone. They got to put it in this area here, or it's a penalty. They get it in there. Now there's a body of people there. The ball's in there. They got to get it. Ugh. Rip it out of there and go to the next area. Put it down again. Got to be in the cones. Now our last one, the loose ball. Give me a bounce, baby. There it is. You scoop it. Get across that line. That's as tight with. You're going to see some tired guys. Water! Mike, I think you had more fun jumping into that pile than you did with the cheerleaders. I didn't get no water, though. <laughs> our first competitor in the fumble recovery, Big Nate Newton. Knock the ball oh. out, Nate. <laughs> <laughs> Nate has really been struggling with that knee, really giving him a problem. I'd love to see him jump into this pile. Is he going to get up onto the mat? <laughs> he gave a nice scream going in. Emmy Terrell Davis successfully completed the Campbell's million can throw. By hitting the target, Terrell secured one million cans of soup for food banks nationwide. We are back at the NFL Lineman Challenge at the NFL Experience, and we're back with more from the fumble recovery competition. Our next competitor, Derek Deese, currently in fourth place. And Derek's kind of like Porsche, very, very serious. Boy, he is, and knocked that ball a little too far away. Had to go chase it. That'll, that'll really cost him some time. But again, one of the smaller competitors, so he is fast. He can make up with some speed. This is the event that every second counts. If the ball gets knocked away two on, feet, Dave. that could kill you. And what kind of bounce you get on the fumble? This one bounces off his leg. Scoops it one-handed. Very nice. 23.4 seconds. That puts Derek Deese in the league, even with his problem. And I think he thought he could go faster than he could have, because knocking this ball this far away cost him a lot of time. But he made a great recovery, scooped it up with style. He's standing by now with Mike. 
You've been in this competition before. Does it, that give you a bit of an advantage in an event like this where you got to actually bend down and pick up the ball? No, nah, you just got to be athletic. <laughs> I don't know what it is, man. I think, uh, I think you got a lot of luck where the ball bounces, and it's kind of like playing on Sunday. <laughs> All right, man, thanks. No problem. Our next competitor, Daryl Russell. Yeah, I've been growing this turf for about 20 years. All right, so he talks when he lifts weights, and he talks for his competition. If you notice, he took the ball out of the dummy's hand. Yeah, it has to hit the ground. That's going to cost him a second. Oh, now there's another smart way to go in. Doesn't dive all the way in and gets out of the pads pretty quick. It's time to beat 23.4 seconds. Nice scoop with the ball. Comes across the line, 20.4 seconds. And even with the second penalty for taking the ball out of the dummy's hands, that will still put him in first place. Again, the ball has to hit the ground. He says, I'll, I'll eat that second. Maybe I'll make up some time somewhere else. That is a huge guy who can go very quickly. All right, our next competitor, Warren Sapp. One of the strongest and quickest guys in the competition. Here comes Big Warren. And he's not in the lead anymore, so you know he's getting serious quick. He again takes it right out. Ball does not hit the ground. One second penalty. Either they're forgetting or it's like you said, they figure I'll take the second because it'll make it go a lot faster. Now he's having a lot of trouble getting the ball out of the pads there. That's going to cost him precious seconds. It's time to beat 21.4 seconds. He gets a nice scoop, comes across the line. 22.4 seconds. It puts him in second place tied with Derek Deese. You know, Michael Strahan, he's doing a lot of smiling. One of the favorites here at the NFL Lineman Challenge. Michael Strahan, an emerging NFL superstar, is the heart and very vocal leader of the New York Giant defense. I like to talk a little bit. And some people say I talk a lot. I don't think I talk a lot. Set the tempo! Let's turn it up on that ass. They can't handle it. Let's turn it up. If a guy does something bad to me, I just can't take it and walk away. I'm going to say something to him. And then if I get the upper hand on him, he's going to hear that I got the upper hand on him. You don't run over here. Tell him he got to run that ball to our right. It don't work over here, dudes. What I tell you, Bobby, you can't with me, boy. If you're going to say something, you better be able to back it up. You got to have the upper hand before you can talk. Welcome. Welcome home, baby. Daddy, daddy. With his blend of speed and strength, Strahan has made it clear that he is a force to be reckoned with at this year's Lineman Challenge. When I'm hosting that first place show, uh, you know, it'll be good. It'll be good. I can put it in the D-line room, let them know, you know. If you keep working, that's what you can achieve. <laughs> It seems like such a nice guy. He's always smiling, but he talks some serious trash. 15 sacks this year, tied for third in the NFL. Came diving through those dummies and knocked the ball out. Cost him a little bit of time. Now shows some speed to get the ball into the designated area there. We'll see what tactic he takes. He takes the jumping on the pile tactic. Got out fairly <laughs> quickly. Could have done it a little quicker. What kind of bounce will he get to end it? He gets a good bounce, good scoop. His time, 22.7 seconds. That puts him in second place. And this is where it cost him. You see, he dives, falls on the ground, and knocks the ball too far away. That cost him a lot of time. He's in second place by about a second and a half in this event. Maybe he could have made it up if he had knocked that away cleanly. But the top two finishers standing by with our Mike Golick. All right, Daryl, you win the event, remain in third, but you certainly have tightened up the standings and the point totals going into this last event. Well, you know, I'm trying to be positive. I'm just trying to show that, you know, with a little, with a little youth, you know, uh, we can maintain, we can maintain. Just like the league, got to get used to the situation right here. Got to get used to the predicament. I think the rain threw me off a little bit, you know what I'm saying? A little home court advantage, but that's okay. All right. okay. Michael, you are now winning this event, going into the obstacle course, the final event. Will that make you kind of be careful going through it? So this guy, flat out, just want to be first place on the next event. All right, guys, good luck, last event. So for the first time, somebody other than Michael Strahan or Warren Sapp wins an event. Darrell Russell picks up the 16 points for winning the fumble recovery. Your overall standings after four events, Michael Strahan leads Warren Sapp 58 to 50. Four down, one to go. We're coming back. It's the biggest game in football. The Welcome back to the NFL Lineman Challenge at the NFL Experience. Hey, fans can gear up and go. And as Eugene Robinson would say, bust somebody in the mouth. You know, a lot of times, it doesn't really matter how nice the Spyro is, as long as you are money. All right, our next event, the Southwest Airlines Obstacle Course. Mike, tell us how it's done.
All right, it's time for our last event, the optical course, and most of the guys, including myself, are happy it's the last one. But we've incorporated a lot of the things you see on the football field into this drill. Again, starting here, three-point, in and out of the bags, frontward and backward. Got to go through all the bags. Now the big guy's got to bend. I'm not going to because I ain't playing. They got to get on all fours and pop up and now show some agility on either side of the bag. It's going to be a lot faster than this, believe me. Now we make him relive a nightmare and pick up another fumble. Come through the gauntlet, drop it. Now they got to catch a pass like that. Get rid of that ball. Now it's the ropes. We get to the ropes. Big agility, come through. If they touch a rope or miss a square, it's a one second penalty. Go ahead and penalize me. I ain't doing it. Get to the end. It's over the dummies. This is it. Oh, it's the final stretch. You cross the line and you're done for the day. My God, I'm so out of shape. Stu. You should be doing this. You're the athlete of this group. Get your butt out here and do this, you lazy. Ah. Yeah, Mike, no, I was a wide receiver. I'm just catching the I'm ball. All right, right. <laughs> Our first competitor in the obstacle course, Big Nate Newton. Nate's had a tough time today. He's had it really had that bad knee, but he's gotten it out. I almost feel bad for him going underneath that thing. Almost until you see his Pro Bowl resume, then you figure Nate's done pretty well by himself. Huh? I have hit this man many times in my career, and as you can see, he is still playing, and I'm not. And look at Nate with the soft hands. Uh, it's oh, several ropes. Several? How about all? I think he hit every rope. Come on, Nate, big finish. You're done, Nate. You are done. You see Nate's time. He also got to add a couple of seconds. For infractions. I think he's just happy he is done. <laughs> Our next competitor, Jonathan Ogden. First player ever chosen by the Baltimore Ravens. I really think he got taller this year, Stu. I think he grew an inch since last year's competition. Ogden bangs his back. You know, it happens. You know, it seems like you really enjoy yourself with this, though. Oh, yeah, I have fun. I come here, hang out, just try to get the fans a show, and... Do my best. Don't worry about it. Good job, man. Congrats. All right. All right, our next competitor, Trace Armstrong. 74.5 career sacks. Trace is a little disappointed, I believe, in himself. Thinks he should be a, a little higher in this competition. Picked it up cleanly. All of them. All Actually of them. had to yeah. wait on the pass for a while. All of them showing good hand. Oh, now you think he would be able to do this, and he's hitting about every rope himself. That's going to cost him a second. Picked it up at the finish. 22.8 seconds. Had a penalty there for one second. Still gets the big, the big uh, reception from the crowd, the home teamer. And then he says, give me the bench <laughs> because I am wiped out. Our next competitor, Robert Porsche, currently in fifth place. Now, he doesn't really have a shot for the title, but he is going 100 miles an hour. He gets under that chute very quickly. Lightning quick. He get, got held up by one of the dummies. Clean on the scoop. Now, all the competitors have done a great job catching the ball. Porsche, no exception. Quickly through the ropes here, but he does have some trouble at the end. His time to beat, 23.8 seconds. 21.9 is his time, but he picks up three seconds worth of penalties, which puts him in second place. You're gonna tell me feet first is Coming up, our final competitors in the obstacle course to decide the winner of the lineman challenge. They don't, they don't change no rules. I'm glad they brought it back. So glad it's back. That's challenge in the second phase of the obstacle course. Those are your four overall leaders, and those are the four guys who have yet to run this thing. We started off with Derek Deese. Again, the lightest of the offensive linemen here. See, currently in fourth place, trying to make a late run. Now, not a lot of size. Derek makes up for it with great agility and great technique on the football field. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. Jerry Rice, his teammate of the 49ers, he is not. Now he's looking good going through the ropes. Nimble, maybe he is. Well, he is? <laughs> Well, his roll looked good. He does have a one-second penalty for dropping the ball. Still, it's time 25.9. I can't find a ball. Our next competitor, Daryl Russell of the Raiders, currently in third place, and D. Russ has got to get moving. Russell, 10 sacks on the air, and the youngest competitor of all eight at 22 years old. 
Ooh, putting a wicked slap on those dummies. You'd be served. How'd you like to be an old lineman getting smacked upside the head like that? Thank you, no. <laughs> Oh, having some trouble getting them big boats. But he looks pretty. He looks like a wideout with those spatted cleats, doesn't he? <laughs> Russell, two seconds in penalties. His time, 25.4, puts him currently in third place. And here comes the man currently in second. And you know Warren Sapp is looking for a fast time here. He is going to sell it out. He's not normally in second place at this point. He's usually protecting his lead. Now he's fighting for it. Sapp very smart. He went on the left side of the far side of that shoot, so he comes up already on the opposite side of the dummy. Scoops the ball one-handed. Easy catch. Let's see if he picks up any penalties in the row. Wow, look at those feet. Big going. Warren. Oh, he's clean through them. Warren Sapp comes in. 21.2 seconds, no penalties. He is your new leader in the obstacle course. Boy, that was by far the best run of the day. Everything was clean, and Sapp knew that it had to be clean. Watch him going through the ropes, every square, no ropes, money time. Sapp with Mike. Warren, absolutely the cleanest run so far. You had some catching up to do. You know what? I'm going to put a little pressure on him and see if he cracks. They say pressure busts a pipe, so let's see. Well, now you have to, the unenviable task of you have to watch now. You know what, I kind of had that same task at the end of the season was watching, so let's hope I'm not disappointed this time. All right, good job, Warren. Thanks. It comes down to this. Michael Strahan must finish first or second in this event to win the overall competition. And Trace Armstrong is currently second at 23.8, so Strahan needs to be better than that time to win the overall championship. Now, even though he doesn't have to beat Sapp's time, you know he'd like to. Oh, the, the competitive spirit in these guys, he absolutely wants to win the obstacle course. And like Sapp, he is just money again. Catches the pass cleanly. This, this is, is the test. Where it's key. Made it clean again, just like Warren. Here comes the finish. Uh, oh, he crosses the finish line in style. 22.8 does not beat Sapp, but does finish in second place in this event, which means Michael Strahan, Mike, your winner, and he dethrones Sapp. I love the little pose at the end. He knew he had it. I guess that's the equivalent, that's the equivalent of trash talking. And Warren Sapp knows it was just one second that separated the two. And as Warren said, all competition, it's tough for a man of his intelligence to take that. All smiles at the end. Strand, your winner, we'll be back to talk to the champion, and look who's smiling. <laughs> Fallon official airline of the Super Bowl by Doubletree Hotels, Guest Suites and Resorts, the official hotel of the NFL, and by Wendy's Monterey Ranch Chicken. It's back. So once again, Warren Sapp wins the obstacle course and picks up 32 points. Remember, in the obstacle course, all the points were double. Probably a little solace to Sapp because your overall winner, Michael Strahan, beat Sapp by a mere four points. Michael Strahan, your new NFL lineman champion. And that means, Michael, Michael, can you sign my forehead? And I tell you, a big reason why he wins is look at how he hugs the dummies as he goes around him. That saves him valuable time early in the obstacle course. And late in the obstacle course, he hugged the dummies and he went through the ropes. Look at the knees. High, no trouble at all. Michael Strahan, your champion. And once more, Mike and Mike. Michael, you did it. You knocked off the two-time defending champ, Warren Sapp, and you are now the top NFL lineman. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. But it, it, was, um, it was fun. I mean, we all had a good time, and Warren's a, a really a competitor, and, and I, he takes the same intensity on the football field, and he brings it out here for these type of things. And, you know, it only makes me compete a little bit more. I think I respect him a lot for that. Well, he put the pressure on you that last one. He comes out with the big time in the obstacle course, and you had to finish either uh, third or better to get the title. So he put the pressure on you. came through clean. Well, he put a lot of pressure. I knew I couldn't make any mistakes. When I passed it at 22.8, I was thinking, boy, if I were to hit something, that's another event we might have to do. <laughs> and I don't know if I have it in me, but um, he came through in the clutch, and I, that's just the way he plays. He's a clutch performer, and I'm just happy I was able to do the same. Congratulations, champion. Thank you very <laughs> much, man. Big props to Michael Strahan as he dances his way to victory here in Miami. He is the NFL Lineman Challenge Champion. For Mike Golick, I'm Stuart Scott. So long from Super Bowl 33. The NFL is online at www.nfl.com. The NFL Lineman Challenge was produced by NFL Films in association with ESPN. For more, log on to ESPN.com, part of the Go Network. Go.com.